Okay, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you very much for having us. Uh, and um, for today, as you could see, I will be talking about uh, avoiding intrusion detection and logging systems. If uh, whether you are a beginner in penetration testing or an expert, one of the things that you need to do is to always find ways to avoid getting detected. Diba? That's the name of the game. Uh, not getting detected so you could be able to complete your mission. And this one, this particular one, as you could see at the bottom, it says, for penetration testers by defenders. And that's because, as mentioned by uh, Miss Margaret, um, I am now currently working uh, on the defensive side. So you could say I'm part of the blue team now. Uh, but when I started, I started with ethical hacking, I started learning about penetration testing, and then I've learned a lot of um, information on how attackers work, and now I'm using those knowledge to defend the networks of organizations that I protect. Now, I would like to return the favor by giving penetration testers, which is Kayo, uh, some ideas on how to avoid intrusion detection systems. Before everything, of course, a little bit of introduction about myself. My name is Juan Carlo Licudine. I am a cybersecurity engineer. And in my current job, what I do is I implement cybersecurity solutions. These are different cybersecurity solutions like uh, SOAR, EDR, PAM, and all those kinds of solutions. And you could say I'm part of the blue team. Uh, alam naman natin, di ba? We have the red team and the blue team. The red team would be the offense and the blue team would be the defense. You'd think magkaaway tayo, but uh, that's not true. We're actually helping the, our organization. Uh, we are actually helping uh, our organization to have a better cybersecurity posture. You attack us. We learn from that attack, and then we improve on those defenses. Quick history about myself. I actually started, hindi ako, hindi ako talaga sa, ano, sa cybersecurity. I was a programmer and developer for the past 10 years. Only recently lang ako nag-switch to cybersecurity, wherein I, you know, I started uh, red teaming, and then now I'm currently in the blue team. Of course, what are we without our tools? Offensive, offensive operations would have offensive tools. Of course, kami rin. We have our defensive tools, and uh, our defensive tools are in the form of devices that help us monitor and stop any malicious activity from happening. You know this as yung pinaka basic antivirus. All computers, at the very least, this is the basic and most simplest form of defensive tool that you could install on your machine whether you are just from a home or on a part of a larger network. There's also firewalls. These are host firewalls and network firewalls. Meron tayong mga web application firewall, host intrusion detection system, and network intrusion detection system. Do take note that this is just a small list of a lot of lists, uh, a lot of tools that we have at our disposal. Ang, ano lang, ang problem lang is, of course, money. Uh, because the, yeah, the, the, the more advanced a tool is, the more capabilities it has and the more expensive it is. But regardless, even with this, with the, with the basic tools, you could already have a lot of uh, no, a lot of coverage with that one. It's all a matter of how to use it and how to properly implement it. So, as defenders, our main goal always is to detect an attack early. This is so no more harm can be done. If you're an attacker, you don't want to get detected. Is if, if possible, you want to be detected late na into your mission. But of course, we understand na there will be times when an attack succeeds. Makakapasok ka, and, uh, and 
what's important for us going forward is to have logs or logging f- so we could be able to investigate. Itong mga logs na to are very important because it allows us to look at what has happened, learn from it, and hopefully try to implement uh, additional security measures so we could stop you from coming back or uh, we could stop ano, uh, other people from coming in. So again, just to set it lang uh, in everyone's mind, I will be discussing all of this information from a defender, giving you the knowledge as an attacker because if you, if you have more knowledge, you could be able to launch better attacks which makes it harder for us, mas mahirap para sa amin, pero mas matututo din kami. So give and take lang tayo. Hindi ko pinapahirapan ng sarili namin just, just because. We want to be able to learn, eh, learn properly and be able to, um, to grow together. So our agenda for today is to, I will be teaching you how to avoid intrusion detection and logging systems. There are a number of them. But for now, I'll be focusing on four important uh, systems. First is the network firewalls, the NIDS or Network Intrusion Detection System, the NIPS or the Network Intrusion Prevention System, honeypots, and after that, I'll be doing a live demonstration para lang makita nyo uh, how it works, ano yung mga data nakikita namin para you could be able to plan accordingly. All right. Oh, of course, if you have any questions, feel free to uh, to ask it at the end of the presentation. We'll be having a short Q&A question, uh, Q&A session, just in case merong kayo mga clarifications that you want uh, to ask from me. Okay. So the very first one that I want to discuss would be a network firewall. If you are, this is if antivirus is the basic thing that you install on a computer to have a, uh, a, a, um, cover, a good cybersecurity coverage, ne- a network firewall is the one that you install first on a network. A firewall is a network security device that monitors incoming and outgoing network traffic and decides whether to allow or block that traffic. This will be based on a specific set of rules and policies. I mentioned that this is the first thing that companies purchase. All ITs know how important firewall is. Because as you could see here on the right, itong sa diagram na ito, you could see that your firewall is the one that would filter. That's the root word. Eh? It's the one that filters the, the traffic that comes in from the internet, actually even from, internal, from the internal network. Um, it allows you to control the flow of traffic and block any malicious traffic that you don't want to happen. For example, uh, you don't want a specific access to a certain port. Ayaw mo nang access via port 80, for example. Gusto mo HTTPS, i-force mo yung HTTPS. You can be able to do that via your firewall. And the reason why this is one of the first things that companies uh, set up is because it is relatively easy to set up. It's easy to understand, easy to configure, and easy to set up. What it does, aside from blocking and allowing traffic, there's another thing that a network firewall does, which is to log traffic. Every traffic that comes in and out whether binlock ba niya yan or inalaw ba niya yan, nilalagay niya ito sa kanyang logs. And itong logs na to is very important. As I mentioned kanina, it is important for us to correlate any activity. Now, a firewall ne- doesn't necessarily send alerts. Well, the basic firewall, ha? Huh? Uh, you need to hook it up to a firewall analyzer for it to be able to detect if there is malicious traffic. If you don't have that, ang pinaka ano lang niya is maglalag lang siya ng traffic. Wala siyang sending of alert. But in spite of that, still helpful pa rin ang firewall. 
Because let's say, for example, you have another device and that device um, has may alerting feature siya and in alert ka niya, oh, there's an alert. Okay? Usually, the first thing that we look at would be the network firewall. Titignan natin what is, what, what is the IP kung saan nagkaroon ng, ano, ng malicious detection, uh, na-detect ng malicious activity. For, sa network firewall, we would check that, that same IP. Maybe we would find out, oh, wait, meron palang nakaroon na brute forcing na nangyayari from this IP. And then it came, it, it allowed traffic from, from this, uh, from outside the network to this particular host. And from there palang, you have a good idea na on where an attacker got in. So again, wag natin maliitin ang network firewall. Aside from allowing and blocking traffic, it can also log the traffic which is very helpful for us defenders. Here's a look at firewall rules and policies. You could see here, here's an example. Uh, this is something that I uh, screenshotted from my own uh, personal test lab network. And you could see I have a couple of uh, things na naka, naka allow, meron din ako mga naka deny. And what I'm trying to do with these rules, with these policies, is I want to control the traffic as much as I can. However, these firewall rules are created by administrators or by or in a more general sense, by humans, mga tao. And pag ang taong gumawa, sometimes may, ano, um, may nagkakamali rin. So, so, it's the human error and sometimes nagkakaroon ng, ng holes sa security. But of course, sometimes hindi naman intended. Sometimes nakakalimutan lang. For example, this one, I disabled this rule right here. Nakalimutan ko in-enable ulit. And that opens up an uh, uh, a, 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 an avenue for attack. Maybe the, the network is too complex, napakalangan ng network, and it's really hard to create net, uh, firewall rules that could cover everything. So, yun palang is a limitation na. So, this is a tip. If, if, you're, if you're on a ano, on the red team, if you're a penetration tester, always understand na the firewall rules are created by administrators. At the bottom, you could see firewall logs. Ito yung logs na sinasabi ko kanina. Every traffic na na-deny, na na-allow, would be listed here. Simple lang naman, it would tell us kung what rule got triggered, like this one, default deny rule, or block IPv4 local, and so on, as well as yung timestamp, kung saan network siya naka-assign, and IP addresses. Source, to destination. Napaka konti lang pero this is very very helpful for us. Now, on to the good part and and the part that uh, is related sa inyo bilang ano penetration testers. How do you avoid network firewalls? First and foremost is to understand the network. Even if you're a, an outsider, you need to still do reconnaissance or uh, yeah, you need to do reconnaissance so that you would understand what is the level of security the network you are attacking you could do this via uh, open source intelligence OSINT maybe you could find public information about the network for example job sites you have a mission which is to pen it, uh, to, uh, to test a particular company you could check out the job sites nung company na yon malay mo meron silang ma-post even if ano even if naka-archive yan you could look at the archives and try to see oh uh, if they have any network administrator jobs na available from there you could see we are looking for a network administrator who knows how to use suricata or 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 something firewall, next generation firewall so from a specific company. From dun palang, you have an idea na. You have an idea of what network they are using and you could also gain other information like how big is the network. Maybe san sila nakukulang. If recent yung job posting na yon, 
sabi nila they're looking for ano for a uh, network administrator uh, ibig sabihin baka ngayon wala silang network administrator might be a good time to strike another tip is to try to think like a defender i've mentioned kanina na to know na administrators are just humans that means anything that we set yung mga firewall firewall rules that we set you could be able to gleam that you could be able to understand and try to come up with hmm i wonder ano ba ang pinaka importante para sa network na ito saan sila maglalagay ng firewall maybe maybe dito sa network na to mas well defended to i would think dito naka dito uh, dito nag uh, dito yung network ng mga executives for example you would know of course na mas mas ano yon mas well defended yon and in case uh, you don't have you don't ha- you, you can't get that information uh, you can also attack from within the network uh, most firewall setup are incoming lang mostly due to laziness and complexity so if i am a, a an it administrator i'm given a chance uh, i given a task or oh, set up a firewall usually ang pinakagagawin ko lang yan is firewall to stop outside traffic inside well that's fine diba that, that's that's fine that's what ano uh, pero if you want a good coverage you want sana aside from network traffic coming inside gusto mo rin sana to have additional security inside you would want to separate the internal networks as well but sometimes due to laziness or to complexity hindi nagagawa to you could you could be able to circumvent it by getting physical access maybe you can go to the building themselves uh, mag social engineering ka get physical access and may makita kang port saksak mo yung ano mo yung laptop mo doon and attack from within if their firewall only allows only checks for incoming eh since nasa inside ka na wala ka ng problema when it comes to the firewall finally another tip would be to use a vpn tunnel vpn tunnel allows you to mask your 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 traffic and this is why lately uh, most malware ang ginagawa nila is they drop a ano a uh, a uh, VPN client or VPN server doon sa doon sa host na ininfect nila that way pwede sila makapag-set ng connection and yung attacker can connect from the outside and because naka-secure connection to via VPN usually mga network firewalls mga network analyzers hindi nila makikita yan pwede makita nila pero ano uh, uh, they don't have all the information that they need All right. So those are the you know the things that you could do for you know to avoid network firewalls. You could see it's very simple lang naman. Um, it, it works very sim- simple and and the way to circumvent is is also is also uh, very simple lang din. Now let's go to something a little bit more complicated. Here is what we call a network intrusion detection system or NIDS. And the NIDS are placed at a strategic point or points within the network to monitor traffic to and from all devices on the network. It's a network analyzer, but it's in the form of a device. If you could look here on the right, it's a f- in a form of a device that you uh, connect to your network and it would read the data that is coming from that network and it will perform an analysis of passing traffic that is passed down to the subnets yung traffic na nakikita niya it would then check against a library of known attacks or signatures so para lang din siyang antivirus may antivirus checks for the signatures of files that you download an NIDS checks for the signatures of the traffic or the packets that comes into your network. If may nakita siyang pattern, 
a specific pattern that is usually related to a previous attack. This is part now of a signature database na chinecheck ni NIDS o oh wait, may nakita ko nag-start siya dito sa pattern na to and then maybe may ginawa siyang iba then that is already a malicious uh, operation. And once it detects something like that that's the time that it will send an alert to administrators for investigation. So, very simple. Hopefully clear lang naman siya. Now let's get on to the next one which is the Network Intrusion Prevention System, or NIPS. Kanina, it's detection. Now, it's prevention. The only thing that you need to understand with uh, NIPS is that it does detection as well as prevention. The NIPS device is placed directly in the traffic path. Kung kanina is just connected to the path, hindi siya yung uh, wala siya sa... Uh, I can go back. It's just reading the traffic. This one, sa kanya, dadaan yung traffic. And what this allows is that the NIPS device can be able to detect and send an alert and also stop malicious traffic. Dun dito pa lang, pag na-detect niya may malicious traffic, stop na niya. Para siyang firewall. Stop na niya here so that it won't continue moving forward. Understood? Alright. So the NIDS and NIPS, again, nakita natin yung difference niya, its detection capabilities is very similar. It's detect malicious traffic by signature recognition, similar to antiviruses. May specific pattern siyang chinecheck to see kung malicious traffic ba siya. Aside from that, it also checks for network bandwidth. Is, is the traffic very large? Maybe that's, uh, let's say for example, meron traffic coming from a host outside. Tapos ang laki-laki ng traffic na yun. Usually, that is a sign of exfiltration of data. Merong nag-upload na, ay meron na nag-exfiltrate ng data mo outside of your network. And that's really bad kasi patapos na sila. <laughs> Tapos na sila sa kanilang, ano, sa kanilang, uh, um, mission or objective. Um, there is also uh, an NIDS and NIPS also checks for suspicious IP addresses. Aside from the uh, signature, it also has a list of IP addresses uh, that are taken from threat intelligence feeds that if it sees, now, okay, wait, this IP has been part of a previous ransomware attack maybe a few months ago. <clears throat> Then, dun pa lang, madedetect niya and mag alert na agad siya. <clears throat> Excuse me. Alright. <clears throat> what are the differences of... Oh. <clears throat> uh, but you might ask, okay, I understand what NIDS and, and NIPS are. What are the differences? NIDS are easier to deploy. If you would look yung diagram kanina, na, ano lang, you just need it to, to connect to a network and then uh, not unlike an NIPS na kailangan siya, doon siya dadaan sa network itself. Another thing is that while NIPS is very powerful because kaya niyang stop yung traffic, uh, it's sometimes nagkakaroon pa rin ng false positives. Meaning, may legitimate traffic siya na sometimes i-stop niya. Maybe because the NIPS may be misconfigured or maybe um, na-confused lang siya sa pattern. And, and sometimes you don't want this to happen, especially if you're a business and you, want, you don't want uh, a particular device to stop, uh, to stop the, uh, no, the business from running. So this is why that while the NIPS is very powerful, some would just prefer an NIDS. Kasi more on detection lang siya. But if you, if you are a company or organization and you want a, uh, uh, something to stop an attack immediately before they, they, when they go through, you might want an NIPS. You need to understand as a penetration tester what type of um, 
what type of uh, network intrusion detection system are in place dun sa network na ina-attack mo. Having said that, how can we avoid NIDS and, and NIPS detection? Very simple. The first one is to use the latest attacks. You have to understand that the intrusion detection systems needs to be updated regularly. They need to download the latest signatures, the latest attacks. If they fail or hindi na update for some reason ng administrator, that means outdated na yung mga attacks niya. And if you are a, a, uh, a penetration tester, you would want to have the latest attacks. Kasi you would be able to do a lot of things because hindi kanya madedetect. Because attacks uh, are based on the list of signatures. Another thing for you to do is to avoid using attacks from known tools. As penetration testers, pinalaki tayo sa mga tools natin like Kali. Um, and itong mga tools natin, while, while great, they are so well known, everyone uses it, that there are already existing signatures for them. Before a Kali release, before a new Kali version gets released, the defenders would already have signatures, would already have tested uh, those tools and have created signatures for those. Or at least yung mga talagang mga hardcore na defenders. And, <clears throat> and it's because of this, uh, so if you can't use our Kali tools, Dito papasok yung expertise. You need to understand how those attacks work. The problem kasi with pre-built tools is they already function the same every time. Pero if you would look at the code, if you would understand how it works, you could actually alter the process or the approach for that uh, uh, processor or the approach, but they, it would still do the same thing. So this is where, ano, dito papasok yung expertise ng penetration tester mo. Next thing you could do is you could obfuscate your traffic. This is to avoid matching signatures. You could encode your traffic differently or simply add null characters. Again, a pattern, a specific attack goes like this, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Well, <clears throat> how about changing that one and then Lag maglagay ka ng null characters in between it. A, B, null, C, D, null, and so on. What would happen there is that <clears throat> what would happen there is that more people sorry <clears throat> what would happen is that um, the even though may nilagang ka null characters, as long as you understand how the receiving end parses that traffic and alam, nalaman mo pala na kahit may null, it would still go through, then that's one thing you can do to avoid getting detection. Hindi niya mamamatch yung signature and you could get your, ano, your traffic through. Another one is encryption. NIDS and NIPS cannot be able to read traffic if it's encrypted. That's what we want, diba? Encrypted traffic is, <clears throat> is hidden. That's why we want to use HTTPS and SSL VPNs. However, there are ways to decrypt traffic, especially if you're in an internal network and you have your certificates. Um, some more advanced NIDS and NIPS devices can decrypt traffic on the fly. The problem lang with this it has, is that it has a lot of processing overhead. Mabagal, bumabagal yung network because it has to go through each of those um, those traffic and and it would decrypt those traffic and then sakalang ipapadala. And sometimes, depending on organization, you want this kind of ano, you want this kind of uh, coverage or protection. Sometimes it's not it's not ano, it's not worth it. Finally, you could even launch a DOS attack or a denial of service. You could flood the NIDS or NIPS with attacks from spoofed IP addresses. 
you could use a bot, uh, a bot farm, and then try to attack the, the, the target. And this will create too many alerts. Remember, the ones behind the curtain are the defenders. Tao rin kami. So if we are bombarded with lots of alerts, it would be very hard for us to, uh, to go through all of those alerts. You could hide your intended traffic within those flood. Of course, uh, those with money can, can, can employ uh, artificial intelligence uh, no, uh, to, to help us. But most of the time, uh, usually walang ganon. All right. <clears throat> So hopefully clear naman uh, yung ano yung I've talked about the differences between NIDS and NIPS. Hopefully you have a basic idea of how it works and a basic idea on how you could be able to circumvent it. Notice I can't give any specific details on what you could use specifically because that will depend on on what you want to do on what you need to do. But as long as you know the basics like this one uh, you can be able to use this information, put it in your tool belt, and then use it even not just for NIDS and NIPS. You could use it for any kind of a, uh, of a security device as long as you understand how it works. All right. Finally, the last one we want to talk about would be honeypots. <clears throat> Honeypots are decoy systems or servers deployed alongside production systems within your network. Honeypots can add security monitoring opportunities for blue teams and misdirect the adversary from their to target. If you would look here on the diagram on the right, <clears throat> with your production systems, you would set up a honeypot on specific areas and strategic points in your network and you would make it blend blend in with the other production systems itong honeypot na to you would make it look like a server itong honeypot na to you would ma uh, make it look like uh, another service and what this would do is that as soon as attacker comes into your network nakita yung honeypot wait that's uh, bukang Pwede ko tong atakihin. Haha, that's where we get you. Uh, we can be able to detect an attack when you direct your traffic to that honeypot. And what's great about honeypots is that it has a low false positive rate. Meaning, it's, it's not going to make a mistake. Uh, not as much as NIDS or NIPS. The reason for that is because normal users... Usually, they don't care about anything else that is connected to their network. They won't snoop around and try to go through different, uh, will try to scan your network and on. Usually, that would be attackers. <clears throat> so, if for some reason, mayroong biglang nagkaroon ng access sa honeypot mo, hindi yan yung basic users mo. That would be definitely be an attacker. A high chance that it would be an attacker. How Honeypot works is that these are hosts and devices that are set up to blend with production systems. Any activity will trigger an alert. And you need to be careful. This is a warning from me to you. Uh, if you somehow end up on a Honeypot, most of the time, or at least yung, yung mga talagang brave na ano, defenders, what they will do is that instead of stopping you, they would monitor your movements. They would monitor your movements without you knowing. They would set up some, some, some things onto that host or onto that honeypot that would, allow you to, that would allow them to see every step that you're trying to do. And this would be very bad for you. Let's say, for example, you prepare to exfiltrate the data. You na, ano na, matatapos na yung, ano mo, yung, yung mission. Mo. Then that's the time dun nila they stop yung connection. Mo. Na stop ka na, nalaman pa nila yung mga tools na ginagamit mo, yung processes mo, because they've been monitoring you, uh, how you work, 
and that means next time that you try to access it, they would be ready. Oh, hopefully, the defenders would be ready. Sometimes, sometimes it would take a long time to uh, to set up, ano, to set up uh, uh, new defensive, ano, um, new defenses. But still, ano kana? Um, they they might not know who you are, but they have an idea na of what you are capable of. So. Honeypots is something to be very, not not very, very afraid of, but to be very wary. Dapat worried ka when it comes to honeypots. This is where recon is, again, very critical. Reconnaissance talaga. If a particular host or device seems too good to be true, for example, may nakalagay free cheese or secret data or Merong easy way to come in. Let's say, for example, may SSH na turn on and then admin admin lang, or may perpetual control. That might be a honeypot. Nap napakadale. Especially if your if the company is very has a good cybersecurity team. Why would they have uh, something that open? Maybe it's too good to be true. So you might want to be. Uh, very uh, critical in trying to review if that certain thing is a honeypot or not. But there are ways to determine that. First is to look for outdated services. Bakit? Imagine uh, what uh, defenders do is that they would set up a honeypot and then they would forget about it. Iwan na nila yan dyan. Because it's a no. It's it's gonna work. May mak may may pumasok and then it's gonna work and you just leave it like that. The problem is, what if the whole network gets upgraded? For example, yung SSH gets upgraded to the latest version, and yung honeypot mo, yung honeypot hindi upgraded. Let's say, for example, outdated na. Wait. So ibig sabihin hindi in upgrade the defenders yon. Inalimutan na nila. So that might be a sign. That that might be a honeypot. Again, it's really up to you. Ano talaga? It's a um, gut feeling na lang siguro yan. Or, or proper reconnaissance. Some honeypots will also be badly set up. Sometimes due to laziness. Um, uh, ano, um, parang ilang beses ko na sinasabi laziness. Eh, hi hirap kasi, di ba? It's, uh, we defenders have a big network to protect. So it's really hard for us to, you know, to protect everything. So, yung focus namin would just be on certain things. And sometimes, may mga certain honeypots kami that we might not be able to properly configure. Merong ang nakasetup na 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 web port 80 pero pag binisit mo, wala palang laman or maybe ano palang, it's just empty page lang siya ganon. So that might be a sign that maybe it's badly configured or maybe it's a honeypot. Using those information, hopefully, you could have an idea on how you could be able to sniff honeypots. Because for us, it's very effective, especially for, especially in catching those attackers who are not that experienced. Ang isa pang nangyayari is that an inexperienced penetration tester would come into a network would would put their tools inside and then it would they would scan the network a problem pala if you try to scan it the scanner would go through specific ports and that port would get triggered alam na namin na merong brute force na nangyari alam na namin na merong scanning na nangyari so be sure to keep that in mind okay so those tips na nasabi ko kanina are specific to that specific device. Here are some more tips that might be helpful, not just for avoid, uh, uh, um, not just for a specific ano, device, but for anything. First is leave the noisiest attack for last. Your objective is to not get detected up until the very end, or if. If possible, nga, never get detected. That would be great, di ba? But there will be times when you will be forced, kasi wala ka ng choice, and you will be forced to use a noisy attack. 
be sure to do that at the last. Pag wala na kami magawa, nag-exfiltrate ka, yun yung pinaka-noisiest attack mo, yun yung pinaka-noisiest approach mo, then do that at the very, very, very last. Ipunin mo muna lahat ng i-exfiltrate mo. Don't exfiltrate in the middle and then look look again. No. Ipunin mo muna sila, then exfiltrate all of them last. Because, once na, before pa kami ma-inform, baka na ilabas mo na yung mga data. Okay? Another tip is that do your attack after office hours. Better yet, during weekends. Even better, long weekends or holidays. Because no one is at the office. Or kung meron man, it's just a skeleton crew that would monitor the network. Usually, yung skeleton crew na yon, wala siyang capability to stop your attack. Or maybe, hindi, hindi sila experienced. And this is why um, most of the attacks that are happening are done during weekends or during long weekends. And there's also a meme, uh, pagka, if you look at defen- mga, ano, Twitter ng defenders, they dr- we dread long weekends. Kasi usually, dito, dito nangyari yung mga attacks. And especially during holidays. Imagine, it's Christmas holiday. One whole, two whole weeks, walang tao. Skeleton crew lang. Doon yung mga attacks na nangyari. And that's the time where you should attack. Yung mga times na ganun. And finally, one last tip would be to leave no trace. If you have access na to the network, do take your extra do take the extra time to delete the logs leave no trace you could purge an entire log or segment uh yung mga mga hosts yung mga if you get access to the firewall you could delete all of the logs if you can if you have the capability or you could change only specific critical logs just to confuse the defenders or you could create an error to mask your activity for example, i-crush mo yung firewall mo or i-crush mo tong NIDS for, or if you have the capability to do that. I-crush mo siya. Most of the effort will be d- done to, to get that device back up and running. Hindi muna nila titignan kung may attack ba. I-set up muna namin. I- ayusin muna namin before we check. And if you do a good job, you could be able to mask your activity. All right. So those are the tips. Hopefully, may nap may napulut kayo na ano na na good ideas and good tips from all of the things that I have discussed. There are of course more. And again, uh, this would be different coming from if if you have a penetration testing, for, uh, if you have a teacher that is more that's more experienced with red teaming baka iba yung ituro nila from 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 sa tinuro ko kasi sa akin it's a different perspective it's a it's tips from a perspective of a defender so hopefully you could get something from that all right finally we'll be going to a live demo this will just be a few minutes uh, and what i'll be showcasing here is that uh, this is a my own lab network that I have set up and in this lab network this is where I launch attacks and detect attacks uh, mostly for my own personal uh, no, uh, learning um, what I have here is that I have a meta exploitable servers over here and we'll be using a Kali Linux machine to launch an attack to those machines and to be able to detect that, I have installed an IDS or a Snort Intrusion Detection System to detect that attack from happening. All right. So a very quick one lang. Let me log in here. Let me see if everything is set up properly. Okay. So this exploitable machine has lots of uh, exploitable uh, vulnerabilities. I have set it up na in advance. I can scan that to see if may mga open uh, ports ba that I could attack. And this one is in Kali using the Armitage uh, program. What it does lang is that it collects, uh, it makes it easy for you to use 
uh, Metasploit. Let's just wait it to finish scanning. Okay, that's done. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get all the attacks related that can be possible for this machine. 172.16.2.15. Let me double check. 172.16.2.15. Correct. So we're gonna get all of the available attacks from within this network and at the very end we have an IDS our intrusion detection system let me try to log in and try to remember ah, okay 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 log in na pala ako. so this one is connected naman to my IDS I can view the logs from here so if I try to view the logs right now let me try to log in IDS that one okay uh, okay 16 427 this happened 427 ago okay don't mind that Muna for now we're gonna go back to this one to our Kali now um, what I'm just doing here is that I am getting a lot of exploits and then ibabato ko tong lahat na exploits na to dun sa machine na yon. So bara bara na brute force method kumbaga. And, and and the reason why we're doing that is just para lang makita natin yung traffic, yung noise na mangyayari if ever you are to do that. The same thing would happen if you would launch a vulnerability assessment tool. Makikita yan ng IDS natin. So knowing that, we're gonna launch a Hail Mary attack. Meaning, all of these attacks na na-detect niya, ibabato niya doon sa server natin. And dito sa IDS natin, we should be able to see yung mga traffic na yon. Right now, wala pa. Just simple traffic, back and forth lang. Pero if we run this na, then that's the time na magkakaroon na ng mga bagong uh, alerts si IDS natin. I'll click on Yes. And it will start doing the exploits. Ibabato niya yung lahat, pa isa-isa, bara-bara lang. Kahit hindi, kahit hindi siya compatible, itatry niya yan. So this is a tool. If you're very, very lazy, you can use this tool. Okay? Armitage. I like it just for testing lang, for checking if, ano, ka, uh, if na, gumagana ba yung IDS ko. Okay. So while this is working, let me go back to my IDS. And you would see, naka command line ako. Normally, you would want to send your logs to an SIEM, to a logger, to a centralized logging system, para mas madali mong ma, ma, ma comb through yung data. Uh, but right now, nagkaroon ng problem yung aking SIEM, so for now, ganto muna tayo. I apologize for that. However, if we go and look at the logs again, hopefully, we would find out if meron bang new attacks 27 oh wala pa okay so we're gonna wait for a bit for this one to finish akin ah, query pala niya hindi pa siya nag-attack pinag-prepare pa lang pala niya yan so it's gonna launch the exploits all of the exploits one by one bahala na si batman and when th when this is done hopefully we'll see some logs on here sa atin alerts. Let me see. Meron na ba? Of course, may, may content delay kasi it needs to process it pa. It needs to uh, place it here pa. So, ayan. Okay. So, nagkakaroon na ng bagong alerts. Let me wait a bit more. Alright. Here is one. I-separate natin to para hindi masyadong magulo. So if you would look here, uh, at this certain time, at this timestamp, an action has been allowed <coughs> and the message is uh, ASCII encoding. For some reason, itong data na to na nakita niya, may ASCII encoding siyang nakita. Uh, this is a Base64 data which we could decode using CyberChef. So tignan lang natin kung ano, yung, ano ba yung laman ng data na yon. 
So you're see right now you're seeing what we are seeing kami mga defenders. Ano bang ginagawa ng mga attacks nyo? Like this one. Ito yung decoded na data. Get API project repo log grab and so on and so on. So this means we have visibility of whatever attack you are doing. But of course, naka ano lang kasi siya, naka port 80 lang siya. So that means hindi encrypted yung traffic. If you have encrypted your traffic, you're using HTTPS, then that means ano, uh, hindi namin mababasa yung traffic na yon. Limited lang yung information na makikita namin. So this is why you should encrypt your traffic. Yung mga tips ko kanina na sinabi. All right. Uh, All right. So that gives you an idea. Of course, it's still ayon tapos na siya. But that gives you an idea of what happens behind the scenes. Ano yung nakikita namin? Right now, it's very ugly because it's in text form. Pero once we send it to an SIEM to a central logging software. Uh, it would be neatly shown to us and maybe we could add more scripts to that to only alert at on specific types of keywords only alert us kung may backslash ba sa URA path and so on and so forth so hopefully that has given you an idea on what we see and if we go back here are some more example of the logs that we gathered para lang makita mo kung ano yung mga iba pang information. Uh, this one says, may backslash daw sa URI path na nakita niya. And ito yung base64 data, may backslash, which is this one. Normally, or at least from the signature that it has detected, normally, dapat wala mga backslash yung mga HTTP, uh, ano mo, mga HTTP, uh, traffic mo. So this might be a good indication of a malicious traffic. Uh, this one sabi naman, FTP command parameters were too long. Even if nakaano siya, uh, dito pala makikita natin, oh, FTP is also checked, HTTP is also checked, and different types of, ano, uh, different types of signatures can be checked as well. So hindi lang siya HTTP. FTP then and all different kinds of services have signatures. So you need to be aware of that. Uh, it can also see kung may server response before a client has requested, backslash in URA path, and kung may ASCII encoding. All right. So in summary, um, I was able to discuss and have given you tips on how to avoid intrusion detection and logging systems. I talked about network firewalls, how they work, how to avoid them, the differences between NIDS and NIPS, uh, and how to avoid them, and as well as honeypots. I've also given you additional tips that you could use in any kind of, uh, in any kind of uh, network intrusion detection uh, security system and also the importance of understanding the defensive side and this is why uh, sometimes if you have the time I always say now if you have the time and you want to expand your knowledge when it comes to uh, when it comes to, uh, to, to, to to attacking or defending you need to go to the other side and try to understand how they approach things. Similar to here, I'm trying to give you a brief look as to how the defensive side works para you would also understand how to move forward, how to plan accordingly. Because if you know how we do it, then you could be able to come up with something better that na hindi nami detect, And that would allow you to be successful in your, uh, in your mission. So there you have it. Thank you very much. If you have any questions, feel free to email me at this email right here. I have my own personal blog where I write about different technical details about cybersecurity. And I also post my programs, my cybersecurity scripts uh, on GitHub 
from this place. And uh, thank you very much for listening. And I do hope I would be seeing you in my logs in the future.